Well, hello there. Eric Griffith here with Griftastic Industries, and today we're going to learn how to mirror your screen wirelessly from your Windows laptop to your interactive BenQ board. All right. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the pros and the cons for what you're going to get out of wirelessly presenting. And I also want to let you know that it is 100% possible to wirelessly present from an iPhone, an iPad, a MacBook, as well as a Chromebook and Android tablet. This video is only going to focus on a Windows device. All right. So the first thing is let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons. All right. So the pros and cons, I'm actually going to start at the bottom of the list and start off with the positive. Um, when I set this up at my school district, I set everyone up with carts. And so all of their BenQ boards are on carts. All of my staff have laptops as well. So the ability for them to move around in the classroom and not be shackled by a desk and a 10 foot cable that connects them to the board was a bit eye opening for some staff members. In fact, I know a lot of them didn't like it at first, but I think they've adapted. The ability for the staff to just move their room around at will um, for those that like doing that without having to call the tech department, I think is a plus. All right. So being able to wirelessly present uh, has really opened the doors for some staff members, allow them to just be able to walk around and uh, facilitate the conversation and not be tied to a desk. Um, I've seen a lot of podiums on wheels that just move around with a laptop. And so the teacher has the ability to move around and present from wherever. So kind of a neat thing. Back to the top of the list though, as a con or a pro, depending on how you run your classroom, students may have access to the staff Wi-Fi and can wirelessly jump into your board. Maybe, honestly, it depends on how your school Wi-Fi is set up. At my school, um, there are students that do have somehow uh, in the past have gained access to the Wi-Fi and so most likely through teachers uh, devices, they've figured out the password somehow and then they're on the staff Wi-Fi and then they too can see these boards, all right? So if they can see a board and they have an iPhone or an Android device and they follow the instructions on InstaShare when it pops up, they're able to jump into the board and sort of hijack the screen. So not the greatest uh, option, but that's why it's also a pro all right, so I use InstaShare 1, the first version. InstaShare 2 is out and it comes pre-installed with the board, but you can actually go into the BenQ store and downgrade from InstaShare 2 to InstaShare 1. And this gives you the ability to disable the other types of wireless sharing protocols. So this is where it gets interesting, all right? There are three wireless sharing protocols that this board supports. One is DLNA, and that is what Windows uses in order to wirelessly add a screen and mirror or extend a screen. All right. Chromecast is what Android devices and Chromebooks use to wirelessly share things up to the board. And for iOS, meaning iPads, iPhones, and MacBooks, they use something called AirShare, uh, or yes, AirShare, that's what it is. And so that allows them to wirelessly share up to the board. In extreme cases where we have students that do have passwords and know how to do things because they have enough time or they've watched the teacher connect their own device, we can go in and disable those specific sharing protocols. So for example, if you know you're in your classroom and you're only going to use your Windows laptop in order to wirelessly broadcast up to the screen, you can shut off Chromecast and AirShare and it will not allow them or anyone else uh, to display up there. So kind of a pro and a con. The pro to that though is students may have Chromebooks and you might want them to share their stuff up to the board. So it really depends on the teacher. And that's why I really like BenQ boards because it's really a a multitasking, uh, whatever you need it to be interactive display. And that's, I couldn't go back to a regular projector after using a Ben Q board for so long. It's just so many features that are built into the board that do exactly what 
I need an R, it's the Swiss Army knife uh, for teachers. If they need to do this specific thing, you can set the board up to do exactly that. So it's a truly cool solution, right? Um, wirelessly displaying, wirelessly presenting. There's kind of an asterisk by this because it's not fair to say that it's laggy when it's displaying video. Honestly, it's only laggy if your school has some oversaturated wireless, meaning there are a lot of students on the Wi-Fi at the same time, or it's not set up properly in order to allow Wi-Fi to share without being laggy. All right, so maybe it doesn't have the latest uh, updates or um, video sharing to the board is not prioritized over your network, whatever the issue may be. There have been multiple cases at multiple schools where teachers say, hey, when I'm on my laptop and I wirelessly present up to the board and I stream Netflix or I play a video off YouTube, it's laggy or it, or it breaks up or it, or it cancels the video, right? It just shuts down. That's where InstaShare 2 comes in and they've, I think, ironed out a little bit more of those bugs. I've encouraged my teachers to go ahead and plug in their laptop to the board if they want to pre uh, present video just because it's going to be the best case uh, scenario to not have it laggy or not have it do anything else. You also can plug a mini computer to the back of the BenQ with a wireless keyboard and just use that as a dedicated machine. That's honestly the best solution. Um, but being able to wirelessly present up there is really cool as well. So those are my pros and cons for being able to wirelessly present. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the next one, which is, boom, there you go, how to use InstaShare. So I've got my setup here and you can see both my Windows laptop and my BenQ on the screen at the same time, all right? So just to show you what this looks like, you're gonna use an application called InstaShare and when you just click Start Casting, it's going to wirelessly display your Windows laptop up on the screen at the same time. And you can see if I grab an icon and move it around, you can see them moving around like that. There is a little bit of a lag when you do that, which is why if you're presenting or doing something interactive, um, the kids aren't going to notice it too much. It's a video that you definitely can see that's interactive, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this on the board right now and show you the process on how to make this work, right? I'm also going to disconnect and show you how to set it up on both the BenQ and the laptop. So the first thing is, let's focus, there we go. Let's focus on the BenQ, and I've kind of cheated here. Uh, in my other videos, I've done this as well. I've plugged in a wireless keyboard to my BenQ so that I don't have to walk over there. And what you want to do before you even log into the board is click on the wireless button on the left. All right, then you want to scroll over and it's either going to say InstaShare 1 or InstaShare 2, or it's going to have a download button that says download InstaShare 2. All right, I've chosen to log in and go to the BenQ store and download InstaShare 1. All right, because that's the version that I'm using. Once I click on that, this application pops up and it has some text across the top, as well as it says InstaShare and some numbers. That's my board's name according to InstaShare. So when I go over to my laptop, that's the number I wanna look at. But I wanna show you some settings that we can turn on and off to make this work a little bit better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go down to that gear and tap on the gear and we have a bunch of different options here. Up at the top, I can click this little pencil and I can rename where it says InstaShare and a bunch of numbers, okay? Because if you're in a school district and you have a lot of these folks online, you can rename it your last name, you can rename it your room number, whatever you want to make it unique so that you can easily find your board there at the top. You also, if you don't trust your colleagues, can set up a pen or a password, all right? So if I click the on button right here, I can then click on the pencil button and type in a password. Your password has to be six characters. So what we do is uh, use a three digit code, maybe it's the phone code, maybe it's the teacher's employee ID, whatever that is, and then three zeros in front of that, uh, or the room number and then three zeros in front of that so that every teacher knows, hey, that's my password. The nice thing about this too is that the password is hidden from the students on the screen. So you don't necessarily have to open up InstaShare every single time. As long as your board is on and it connects to the network, 
you can go ahead and wirelessly broadcast to the board without any issue, all right? But you wanna make sure that it is wirelessly connected first. So as the board is booting up at the bottom, it's gonna say wirelessly connected. So if you open up InstaShare on your laptop and you don't see the board name in the list of boards, go ahead and reboot your board and let it wirelessly connect to the network and that should resolve the issue, all right? So you can turn on this uh, password. I'm not gonna do this for this demo. Um, I am though gonna turn on this option right here that says, says allow mobile touch. So turning that on means I can go up and touch the board and it will touch back to my laptop. So kind of a neat thing, I can have my wireless laptop on my desk or I can have it on my podium. At the back of a table, I can have an aide holding onto the laptop as well. And as long as we're using InstaShare to connect, we can both tap the board. Not, not at the same time, meaning like uh, two different mice on the screen, but if you tap over here and then your uh, assistant or aide or intervention specialist taps on it over there, it registers both touches, all right? So kind of a nice thing, nice thing if you're walking around the classroom facilitating the conversation or helping students, one of the two of you can still touch the board at the same time, one through the mouse and the laptop, the other right at the board. So really neat option. So once you have those set up, you're good to go. But this is where I wanna show you an additional option. So right down here, it says more. If we click on more, this is where it shows those wireless protocols I was talking about. AirPlay is what it's called. Maybe not AirShare is what I probably said. AirPlay, Chromecast, and DLNA. AirPlay, again, is for iOS devices, which include iPods. Uh, well, yeah, iPods, um, iPhones, iPads, and MacBooks and MacBook Airs, right? So all of those use that protocol. So if you don't use those at all, you don't have anybody... In your classroom, you don't have one of those iOS devices, you can unselect that and people won't be allowed to share with their Mac devices up to there, all right? That reduces the risk of students jumping in and um, just terrorizing your board, all right? But if you've turned on one of those options, they still have to type in a code, all right? So you at least know that they're in their class. But again, that, that safety thing that we need as educators where you can present and use this device without any worry, if you know that's a thing that you're not going to need, turn it off and they won't be able to do it. The same with Chrome and Windows, all right? I think the majority of staff most likely have a Windows device, but maybe they have a, just a Chromebook. Shut off DLNA if, if you don't use a Windows device. Shut off Chromebooks if you don't use a Chrome device, all right? So I'm going to use all of these because this is my demo solution. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and X out of here and show you what this looks like. All right, so I've left all those on for the sake of um, demonstration. All right, so you also see a code up there that H L E U J H. Yep, need my eyes examined. So, anyway, um, examined. So, anyway, that is an alternative code if when we get into the laptop and we install InstaShare, if your board doesn't show up in a list you should be able to type in that code and connect to it. If you can't, then most likely your laptop and your board are not on the same network. You can tell what network, whoops, you can tell what network your board is on over to here. If you look in the upper corner, you can see the name of the wireless network right up there at the top. So from a troubleshooting perspective, that's one of the things you wanna look at is wirelessly up there, make sure that those names match and that will make it work a lot easier for you. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my main board and then I think we're gonna jump over to our um, over to our laptop. So let's focus on the laptop right now. And so what I wanna do on the laptop is go ahead and launch BenQ, all right? So at the time of this recording, um, BenQ is currently out of, uh, service they're working on their website so the website is down but if you go to google and search instashare one and then the word benq the very first hit is going to take you to a web page where you want to download the windows version of this go ahead and install it and hit yes to everything it asks you and then once you've installed it it's going to pop up with this screen right here and it's letting me know that i'm on the same network and i see my board 
right there. It gives me the IP address for the board and I can just hit connect. But if I didn't see that board, I could also type in that H code right down there. So if we jump back over to uh, the board and we look that code up again, we could type that in there and it would connect. If it doesn't connect, go down and check your Wi-Fi in the bottom corner. And again, double check that you, your laptop and the board are all on the same page, right? As far as wireless goes, right? So once we have that and the board shows up, we can then hit connect, all right? So then it says, okay, it is connected to the board and it's gonna give us a couple of options. Now, by default, most likely, every gonna, everybody is going to want to just share and mirror their screen and start casting, all right? So it's a little confusing. There's a button down here that says screen mirror. And if we turn on screen mirror, what that does is mirror the board to your laptop. And you're thinking, why would you do that, right? Why would you wanna see what's up on the board to make it be on your laptop. Well, maybe your staff device has a 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 inch screen and you have a student with visual impairments and you, they can't sit close enough to the board to see the board writing. So you could use your device to make the screen bigger for your student and they could just watch what you're doing up at the board, all right? That's an awesome feature. I don't know that you'd ever use it, but I'd like you to know that it's there. All right, so that's the screen mirroring option. By default, most likely everybody is going to hit start casting and they're gonna say share full screen. Now, when we do that, I'm gonna switch back to the both button here and I'll hit this. And again, it should just start casting right up there. Okay, within a couple of seconds, it's just gonna share our screen. And again, everything that we do on the laptop wirelessly mirrors up to the board and vice versa. So if I go up to the board and I start uh, dragging and dropping or open up Word or PowerPoint, Excel or Chrome or anything like that and start annotating or writing, it mirrors back to the board, all right? The annotations, or it mirrors back to the laptop. The annotations don't, but the whatever you do to the board, it's as if you're remote controlling your laptop screen. So that's a really nice feature. You also have the ability to use the remote and blank the screen and freeze the screen, everything else that you normally do there um on the board itself okay so kind of a nice feature to do that but there's another way to use this and it's a little bit more advanced so i'd like to show you what that looks like here i'm going to go down and focus on the board real quick and in order to close this out you can see that little x down there if i hit that that ends the focus on the or that ends the sharing on the device you can also just hit stop sharing or disconnect on your laptop and it disconnects it too. So anyway, in short, that's how you mirror the, the display up to the BenQ board. I've gone over the pros and cons on why you would want to do something like that, but give it a, give it a, uh, a test, right? Take a leap of faith, give it a try. I think you'll like it. I think you'll find that depending on what you teach, it'll give you a little bit of freedom to walk around the room and use the technology, all right? So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and I hope you have a grooftastic day. Thanks.